Corey Riesler, our sheriff, is my sous chef today. <laughs> so we'll, let's see if I can give him orders. We'll try that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and Chad, where, Chad? Chad's visiting us today. You've seen him many times helping with a cooking class. So he decided to just come in and check with a cooking class again. And then... I'm making sure that Corey's doing a good job. Yeah, I, I heard that Chad was a good sous chef, so... Yeah, that's right. And in, in January, the last Friday in January, I do not know the food, but Adam Payne from the county will come and be the sous chef. So that'll be nice. Um, look at all these volunteers. Terry Snow, Francoise Pietzner, Judy Clark, Peggy Watson, Janet Ray, Vicki Meyer. Without you, I could not do anything. Thank you so much. Okay, winter squash, winter squash. It's harder than the summer squash. One of the things I want to talk to you today is how to get these squash cooked. Do not use a knife or an axe. Oh, God, no. This, this one is a giant acorn squash, light flesh. This one is our spaghetti squash. We know that one. Turban, beautiful. This one is called something else, delicata, and it's okay. Butternut is very dark and tasty. And then this one is my favorite, buttercup, with this bulb on the end. Now, the grocery stores are calling this one buttercup, and it's almost the same, except this one is drier. So it soaks up lots more butter and cream. <laughs> We know butter is good, right? Oh, God, yes, yes. Okay, how do you do those? Well, you put them in the oven until they're like this. Rip it open with your hands or a little knife. Marilyn, do you poke any holes in it before you put it on there? I don't. Does it explode? So far, it hasn't. And then, till done, I don't know. <laughs> 300 for an hour, 325 for four, how, until you can poke it with a fork easily. Okay. And so here I picked out all of the seeds. So that takes care of the butternut. I, I'm not cleaning it out carefully, but that's an easy, safe way. How about this little acorn? Cut it in half, okay, or bake it until it's soft. Easily cut it with a little paring knife. Rip it open, take out the seeds. And Marilyn, are the, are the seeds anything like a pumpkin seed, or is that something that you really couldn't utilize? I don't know. Has anybody roasted? Oh, yes? Squash. Are good? Yeah, they're a little, a little smaller. smaller. They're a little smaller. Yeah. Spaghetti squash. Baked until it's soft. Wow. It's a lot easier. <laughs> And it really doesn't matter if you're burning the outside because you're no. just utilizing the inside. Okay. Pull out the guts, which is easy to do when they're cooked. But sometimes, you know, spaghetti squash, the seeds kind of go into the flesh quite a bit. There's a lot of seeds in spaghetti squash. But this is an easy way and a safe way. Now, you don't get chunks, that's true, but, and then, of course, you've got spaghetti. Yep, that is good. Now, it's delicious squash, which I think tastes wonderful with brown butter. Now, if people put spaghetti sauce on it, they're going to be disappointed. It does not taste like spaghetti. Okay, these can go into the kitchen. This week when I did... The big pot of winter squash soup. I probably had 10, 12 winter squash, different varieties. Well, I, I just put in two or three one afternoon, bake it until the evening, put in some more, put in the next day, wow. rip them apart, and put them into the pot. The pot is very heavy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I'm yeah. It's not for my good looks. <laughs> now, now, who made the pickles? Corey, 
So tell us about the pickles. So the pickles are my grandmother's recipe. Um, so one day last year, I think I made my first batch with my mom. And uh, she passed it down to me. And this year I made 95 quarts. Oh. So we had, we had the help of a neighbor who had um, some pickles that uh, donated to us. And then we also had um, five bush pickle plants. Wow. So if you're not familiar, bush pickles are different than cucumbers. So bush pickles only really grow in a, a, around bush. They do vine out. But you know how sometimes those cucumbers can go for like miles? Oh, yeah. Right? These don't. But it's still a cucumber. It's, it's still a cucumber, okay. but it's a, it's a bush pickle. So they really don't get as big. When they get too big, where a cucumber you can still utilize, when the bush pickles get too big, they're really not any value to it. They, don't, they, get, they get ugly. Um, okay. So we do that, and we do a lot of onions in there. Oh, God. And which, if you've had a, a chance to taste the onions, are to die for. Yep. Um, just a jar of pickled onions. Oh. Exactly, exactly. So some of those we do just a lot of onions. We do um, some two-quart jars for bigger events, for like when I come and volunteer my time here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we do um, mostly a lot of quarts. But this year, I started doing pints. And look, the neat thing about pints is when you're eating them today, they're warm and they're fresh and they're just right out of the jar. When you put them in the refrigerator and they start to, to get a little cooler and stuff like that, they're still good, but it's that fresh pickle, right, the first time you open it. So if you do pints, you just do you know, more times to get to open that fresh pickle. Um, and you can eat a pint at a crack. Oh, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Somebody I know could eat a quart at a crack. <laughs> and they're very simple. Um, we do not do any water bathing, any of that fun stuff. We put our jars in the dishwasher, sterilize them, bring them out. Um, have our, our pickles all cut, our onions all cut, our dill ready to go. Shove them and stuff them in as much as you can. And from there, we add our brine, uh, basically a 14 to 6 ratio with uh, vinegar to water. Oh. Then we put a, a, a cup of, a cup of um, pickling salt in the brine. It will make 11 quarts. Mm -hmm. And from there, when we, we're done, we obviously boil our lids, put our lid on, seal it tight, and we put it in the oven at 300 for about 15 to 20 minutes. You notice how they look a nice yellow and, and they're not fresh green? You can start to see that color change when they're getting about that 15 minute. So if they're still really green, like these are a bigger one, so these may be going for 25 minutes. But when you start to see that color change coming, then you know you're, you're good to go. The only thing about doing these compared to water bathing is, uh, obviously it's a lot easier, yeah. But um, for these, it may take a little longer to seal than what a water oh, yeah. bathing does. Sometimes when you water bath, you bring them out, it's like minutes and they're... Popping. Oh, yeah. They, these, they click, 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 click. As you, yeah. These will take up to uh, around uh, 12 hours sometimes to actually pop. Wow. Yeah. So don't get frustrated like my mother does. <laughs> she starts complaining the first batch that we're not doing this anymore because they didn't seal. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And 12 hours later, you come back and they've all sealed. So I've, I've really... I don't think I've had any in the 120 some quarts that I've done in the last two years that haven't sealed. And if one doesn't seal, just keep it in the fridge you for bet. a couple of weeks and eat you it. Bet. Put it in, this, yep. in the refrigerator for a month, bring it out, eat it, and it'll be great. Yep. The other thing you'll notice with these, uh, compared to the water bathing, is as Marilyn pointed out to me, you're like, these will stay crunchy. The water bath, they seem to get a little, mm -hmm. a little, a little weak and not yep. so not so crunchy. Yep. Right. These will stay crunchy. I have friends that will not eat them for a year. Um, they eat last year's, this year, and they'll take the ones that oh, we yeah. made in July and August and, and, and do those next year. Um, so they last for a long period of time, put them in the basement on the shelf, and, oh, and they're gosh, really good yes. to go. So. I think I told you the story about my mother's friend, Ivan, when he was a kid in Eau Claire with all the kids, and they rented a farm in the summer because there were six or eight kids. So the, the guy worked at Gillette Rubber, but in the summer they rented a farm and had lots of things to, to grow. And the mother canned and canned and canned all summer, about 800 quarts of all sorts of things. But then the children could take a jar of anything they wanted at any time to eat. And I do the same with our salsa. We uh, put them in the oven to seal them. Uh, and also then we get a lot of tomato juice and stuff after we're taking all the, the, the remnants from the... Uh, from the salsa, which is great to do too. A little trick on those that, um, that I like to do for my okay. tomatoes when I'm cooking them, either to stew them or to do the salsa, is cutting them in half once they're plenty ripe, taking that small little core out of the bottom, 
taking as many seeds as you can get and setting them in the oven on a, on a uh, uh, cookie sheet and broil them for five minutes. Then you can take a fork and just peel that top layer of skin right off. Don't discard it though. Throw it in with your remnants. Take all your remnants at the end. Put them in a, a, basically a cake pan. Broil that for another 10 minutes. Put it into a... The big cone shaped thing that your mother always had. Right? Yep. And we went from the first batch of salsa that my wife made to probably a half a garbage bag of, of remnants to a ball about this oh, big. Oh, great. Um, because you took all the juice out of all that remnants, and then we made juice, and we put those in the oven and, um, and sealed those as well. And then the pigs did not get much to eat. They did not get much to eat, but the neat thing, I guess I'll comment about the canning, and, and Chad and I are prime examples of this is not something that's going away. This is something that, that is younger generations sure. doing too. It's not, just, it's not just generations where things you know, all start to fall off mm -hmm. and people don't right. do anymore, like manners. You know, like, <laughs> but the so, so are prime examples of that, yep. that we see the value of this right. and we see the fun. Sure. Um, and for me, uh, obviously, with everything that's going on this year, they're great stress relief. Oh, gosh, you know, yes. It's a yep. great right. time to spend with my mom and, 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 and go through and do those things with her and, and really having that ability to pass on that family recipe. We have on our recipe. On with the result. The recipes. Let's start with... Fideo. Now you knew you were doing winter squash and we're doing winter squash soup, but fideo is a Spanish Mexican dish. And fideo, as far as according to my husband, means noodle. So you all know rice aroni, San Francisco treat in the little box, but that's the little noodles and the rice. This is simply the rice. Sorry, the noodles. I have melted here some butter. Let's put in a little olive oil. Carefully measured, of course. You know how we carefully measure. Let's get that heat up there. And what I'm going to do is saute the noodles until they're brown. If you were doing rice, you would saute the raw rice until it was brown. But as soon as it's brown, then put the liquid on right away so it's not black. I think there's a scissors here. Noodles go in. Give it a stir. And we'll just let this cook while I'm talking. I'm going to add to it onion. And the reason I have this onion is a green onion is because Chad sometimes gives me the vegetables he's not going to use, so I use that. And the yellow pepper, too. Oh, I did want to thank... Chad's sister-in-law from Chippewa Falls, visiting in Sheboygan, went to a farm, and I said to her, if you can find any interesting squash, you know, would you get those? Because I couldn't find the turbans, and I couldn't find the um, Hubbards. Well, she came back with all of this and would accept no money for it whatsoever. So um, these all came from Chad's sister-in-law. So thank you, Chippewa Falls. Everybody working together, but remember, it's Chad's basement and Corey's basement that's got the food. <laughs> We're going to run back and forth between each other's houses because <laughs> we live on the same street. <laughs> that's right, on the north side of Sheboygan, yes. It's starting to get a little bit golden. You can tell by the mirror here. <laughs> now, in the squ squash soup that I'll bring out, you'll see it's a lot of soup. I used all of that stock. I made all that stock from last, last month. I probably used six quarts in with the soup. I'm going to use some of the stock here today. So, and cooking at home, I have no, no stock left from that giant kettle that, I, that we did last time. It's starting to get a little golden. Let's get it a bit browner. Can you see some of the brownness in there? Mm -hmm. well, that's called flavor. That's called flavor, yes. Okay, now, before it burns... Yeah, we want to put in the onions. I'll put in the stock. And the magic tomato sauce. To make chili con queso, melt cheese with a can of Rotel. Or tomatoes. 
but I, I like to use that Rotel. I learned about it when I lived in Texas for two or three years when I met Lee. And Marilyn, how many pickles do we put in there now? As many as you'd like. Everything revolves around pickles. Yep, right. So it has broth. It has the tomato. It might need more liquid. Oh, let's put some of this in there. And there again, somebody gave this to me, and I can't remember who or why. Well, we might as well just use all of it. White, white Zinfandel. It, it can be liquid. Now, I don't think it would work so well with orange juice or coffee or anything like that, but lots of liquid is needed. Now, turn this so it cooks. It has to cook the noodles until the noodles are done. Will it take 10 minutes? Will it take 20 minutes? Depends upon how, the temperature of your stove and your skillet and so forth. But cook till done. And I did have... We've got this one, or I think better... This one upside down. And if it hits the floor, the sheriff knows how to find it. (laughs) Any questions about the fideo? Then if you look at the pumpkin bars, back in that corner is three trays of bars. One are pumpkin bars, one squash bars, one sweet potato bars. Take one of each and see if you can even tell the difference. So any questions about the squash bars, sweet potato bars, pumpkin bars? A little bit of butter. A little bit of olive oil. And Cora, I forgot to put most of the spices into that fideo. Could you take the pepper, about a pinch of sugar, some salt, and the cumin and flavor that fideo? I forgot all about it. It's a little bland with just noodles and tomato. And part of this class is me making lots of mistakes, as we do at home when we're really cooking, right? Yeah. I'm making squash soup. Winter squash soup. One carrot, one carrot, one onion, one stalk celery I do not have. We pretend we have those here. And we're going to need some, uh, some stock. And I used all of it in the fideo, so can you get about, I don't know, this much water in the wine bottle? Oh, here's a squash. Well, he brought me the spaghetti squash, so it'll be a spaghetti squash soup. Sure. And at home, I'm more careful. Are you sure that's water? Or that's, uh, water? <laughs> I think that's all we can get out of the tap here. <laughs> I had a whole dentist, didn't like kids, didn't like Nova Cane Boy. It was so oh, my gosh. So, so Marilyn, the, the neat thing about utilizing the squash like this, you can use all these different kinds oh, yes. to make the winter squash as opposed to just having to have one specific kind yep. Yep. and really not having to waste any of, the, of the, the squash that you have left over, like all the stuff on the table can actually go towards that if someone wanted to. And that's kind of the neat thing about it is, same as I talked about you like the leftovers from the salsa and making the juice and then using it again in chili or something that you want or even for um, just uh, tomato juice. But really the waste and not having that left over is what's really... Um, so I had an opportunity to also grow my own dill Okay. And I had a lady call me that, um, I, so I put on Facebook, does anybody need any dill? Because I had a gazillion, right, plants of, of dill. You know, next year. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, this, so a, a lady that we know um, 
commented on Facebook that she wanted anything that I had because they used it for their fish foils. Oh, so they, they nice. Put it in a big garbage bay and put it in the fish foils in spring or winter when they're doing their fish for the Valentine's Day Good idea. Like that. So she thought that was a really good idea until I came over with the, the actual garbage bag full of dill because they want everything from the, like the base on up. They just throw the whole thing in there. And I came over with a garbage bag like full of dill. And That's a big it. bag. She didn't really know that that was going to be enough, but it was. So. <laughs> so really just, it's all really about just you know, utilizing what you have, yeah. not yeah. wasting. Um, and, and Do you know how to do a fish boil? Chad, do you know how to do a fish boil? I do. Aha! Uh-huh. Yeah. Right, that might be one of our uh, one of the things coming up sometime to use, right? Oh, it sounds good. Probably not in the winter. No, I don't think we have to do it in the outside. Yes. Pumpkin in the oven like squash? Yep. And do it the same way? Yes, I do. Correct. The whole pumpkin. No. If, if it fits in your oven. Yeah, and I do have to put the rack on the bottom <laughs> shelf. Right. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. When the yeah. fire department comes, just mention their own name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she says fine. <laughs> Let's see if we have any flavor here. There's nothing. Okay. I think I need to get some of those kitchen spices like salt at least. Oh, by the way, while you're, we're, I made some wild rice. I had a package at home or two packages. I made a package of wild rice and um, cooked it in some of that stock again. So that wild rice will be at this end of the table. This will be the soup. You go down to this end and you put a little bit of the wild rice into each bowl of squash soup. Over there will be the fideo, and that'll be the bars. That way, there's so many of us, we don't all have to get the same food at the same time. It shortens the lines. And of course, salt and a pinch of sugar, not to make it sweet, but you know the old mantra, to enhance the flavor, to bring out more flavor. And I ran out of black pepper at home, so I've been using the white pepper until it's gone. And there is a difference in flavor, but I can't tell it. Okay, now let's see if we have any flavor to this thing. Oh, yeah. But it still needs a little more salt. Okay, Corey, here's another tasting spoon. Turn this baby off, see what you think. You can leave it on there. I'll, I'll, yep. And that's mostly spaghetti squash. Very good. Yeah, no, without <laughs> With <laughs> enthusiasm. That's it was just water. Yep. No wine, no stock. Yep. You're right. Yeah. I get the non alcoholic version, right? 